Hello! I'm here to show you how all the different detector units work, what you can do with them, what you can do with the different upgrades, and basically how you can utilize all of them. Um, so without further ado, let's get going into some crafting. So I'm going to uh, show you the crafting recipes continuously during this whole video, but we'll start with the ones we need uh, at the very moment. So first of all, you need a base unit, the detector unit, and you craft it uh, like this. So um, not that one, there you go. Uh, and then a simple piece of beer at the bot no, in the middle, sorry, and a red sun there. There we go. So this is the detector unit. That's the base of all these detector things. And um, since I'm creative, I'm just going to grab a full stack of that because we're going to use that in the different recipes. Um, so for now, I'm simply doing that. So I have the detector unit there and add a simple PCB on top of that. Then we get detector manager. So that's one of the different detectors. So that's the one we're going to start with. And then we take a look at the other ones later on. Okay, so if you want to use this in the world, what you want to do is um, simply place it uh, like so. Um, as you can see, we also have colors on the side. We can take a closer look on that, uh, like so. But more to that later on in this video. So you can ignore those colors at the very moment. Okay, so this is the detector manager. And what we want to do is put in a, a advanced detector rail on top and then hook it up to our railway system, like so. There we go. Okay, so what does this do? Well, if we right click here, we're going to get a quite advanced interface, but we're going to go through this, so take it easy. Uh, so here we can get to the module. So here we have a list of all the different modules that do exist in Steve's cards too. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we can't fit them all. So here you can go to page two, a few more modules here. Um, so what we want to do is we can detect if a card that is passing by has this specific module. Um, so we might want to do different things if a card arrives with a solar engine or a coal engine or maybe with a advanced, a more advanced hull with a reinforced one rather than the standard one and so on. So what I'm going to do is just click on the coal engine. Um, click and hold down the mouse. So now I'm dragging it along. As soon as I release it, I'm going to drop it. But if I drag it and drop it on, on top of this output thing here, um, I've set this to the output. So now I'm detecting that we should have a coal engine, and if so, the output is true. Uh, what the detector manager does when um, when we have it output as true is to send out the redstone signal. So we can do something with it. And uh, just to, to check this out, I'm actually not going to use the coal engine because I don't have anyone with the coal engine. But what I'm going to use is a top chest, like so. So I can just take any module there and drag it along. So uh, there you go. I have a top chest on that card, but not on the other one. These have a creative engine, so I don't have to supply them with fuel. So there you go, a redstone signal when it passed by. But if I take this other one, it's not going to give me a redstone signal because that card here didn't have any top chest at all. If I change this and use the um, the standard hole, for instance, uh, both of these is going to give me a redstone signal like that. Like that because both of them have the standard hole. Of course, this is not too advanced, but we can we have more things to do. So if I uh, right click, it's going to be removed, so I can add more things. Um, and I can head over to the flow part here. And the ones we're going to talk about now are the four first one, the and, or, not, and XOR. These are logical operators, and what they do is to combine the different um, logical values. So if we, we can check, for instance, the following. Uh, we have an AND here, and then what I want to do is, for instance, we should both have a standard hole and a top chest, for instance. If that's the case, uh, we won't see too much of a difference right now. This one would be true, because it had the top chest, uh, and this one won't, because it didn't. But if we send along a top chest card without the standard hole, it wouldn't uh, be true, because we require both the standard hole there and the top chest as well. We could... Um, head over and use the OR instead, and maybe it com becomes a bit more clear. Uh, let's check for a seat or a top chest, okay? So if we use this card, that card had neither of those, more to what we just saw later on. So this is a card we will use later, but no redstone signal, okay? If I use the seat one, we'll get a redstone signal, and if I use the chest one, we also get a redstone signal, because we had a seat or a top chest. Then we also have the exclusive or that means that just one of them can be true. Uh, 
in this case it wouldn't matter because we would never have a chest and a seat at the same time and then we have not which reverses the value so we can use to get take an example of the not and what we could do is simply add a not there and maybe look for a seat so now it will send out the red stone signal if a card passes by without a seat. So that seat is not going to produce a redstone signal, but if we use this one, which does not have a seat, it's going to send out a redstone signal for us. And these things you can change, so we can just add a lot of things here together. So if I have an AND, I can add an OR here. I can add, add a AND to that, a NOT to that. I can add a, a AND to that and now I can't add anymore. If I try to add it, it's going to turn red because I've added too many. Uh, I can add uh, things here, but I can't go further. So as you can see, we can make a very lo uh, big logical trees here. And that's sort of the uh, key point to these detector managers and these detector units. Uh, but if we have an uncompleted tree here, we're not going to produce any good values. It's it's uh, going to give very weird results. It's going to return false uh, at some points. So you want to complete the tree, but I want, just wanted to show you uh, that you can make these quite big trees. Oh, all right, there we go. Here's the next thing we want to do. Um, so we had modules. We can check if we have a module in a specific card, so that's fine, but we can also use these states. They work the same way when we add them, but uh, they detect a few different things. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, let's reset this. I just right click the top one to remove it. And what I want to check is has player passenger. Okay, so what this does is it doesn't check for a specific module, it checks if this thing is, um, is true, if it has a player passenger. So if I send this, this card along, this one without a seat, it obviously doesn't have a player passenger. If I send that along, it hasn't a player passenger either, but if I, there you go, redstone signal. So if I was sitting in there, it's actually sent out the redstone signal because uh, it had a player passenger and that was what I was looking for. So if we wanted uh, to be, be sure that, well, we didn't have a player somehow else, at the moment that's not possible, but what we could do is, for instance, we check for a seat and a player passenger like so. That would be totally possible. But as you saw, it was fine to just check for the player passenger, but in some cases we might want to check multiple things. And of course, we can include these ones as the modules as well. Another thing that we can do is, for instance, uh, head over to, oops, the uh, is storage completely empty, for instance like so. And if we do that and sen send this along here, uh, we're going to get a redstone signal because it was completely empty. If we send this along, we're not going to find any storage and therefore no redstone signal. And if I hurry and put something in there, we don't get a redstone signal because now the storage here wasn't completely empty. Um, and therefore no redstone signal. Of course, if we wanted to check that we actually had something in it, we could just use the not here and then the is storage completely empty. So what we have here is a ton of these uh, uh, different uh, passengers. Those are for the cage or in the instance of the player, that's for the seat. We also have uh, the railers, for instance, if they have any rails left, if we have any torches left for the torch placer, if the shield is active, if the shank loader is active and a ton of things like that. We have the, for the tanks as well. And then we have these little uh, weird things. Is Power Observer active um, with four different colors? So that's the Power Observer, which is a, uh, a module, uh, that one. And the only reason why you would have the Power Observer is to interact with the detector units. So that module is specifically for these units. So to test that, I'm just going to build a little um, uh, track here uh, for testing and here I'm going to have that one and then that one and then we have the redstone signal here just to check I'm just going to move it up here so it's easy to see and uh, what I want to do now is for instance use is power observer red active okay and as we actually saw earlier uh, when I opened the interface of this card is that it had a power observer so if I send that along like that, it's not going to do much. So the power observer, what it does, a uh, short recap here, or well, a short um, information about it. If you don't know about it, there's a specific video for it if you want to know more. But basically what we have here is we can move all the engines that we have in the cart. At this moment, we just have a solar engine in this cart, and I can move that and drop it here. 
So now we have marked the solar Indian to be here. Then we can set the amount of power we want to be in the solar Indian, for instance, uh, 1k. Um, if I had multiple Indians, it would sum the uh, power uh, power level and we would use that uh, to detect here. And we have four different ones, so if you want to say, all right, I want to see if we have 5k of power in the solar Indian, or maybe if we have 20k of power in total, then we have the blue one and so on. Uh, but like I said, there's a video specifically about the power observer, so um, go and check that out if you're interested more about what's going on here. So n now I have this set, so this is red, uh, that means that it's not active, and since we're detecting if the power observer red one is active, uh, it's not going to give us a redstone st uh, signal, because it's not. But as soon as we reach the point of this solar ending having 1k in power, it's going to turn red, uh, not red, turn green, and therefore the power of the server is active, and that's one of the states that we can detect, and therefore we'll, we'll get a redstone signal. So we should be there pretty soon. Um, a few more laps like that. So as you can see, these states are... The be, being able to detect different uh, things. There you go, uh, special things for the different modules, whereas the modules tab is to detect if that module actually do exist. And uh, there you go, it's green. If it would increase it more, it would turn red again because we don't have 2k of power. So this is a way of detecting how much fuel you have in different engines and in different combinations of the engines. So the states here, uh, if you want to, you can, of course, go and detect if we have a power observer as well. And if so, do something special. Um, but if you only want to detect if it's active, you don't have to check that. But maybe what we want to do is, uh, for instance, uh, if the, the red one is active or if we ha get a card that doesn't uh, have a power observer. So maybe you want to wait for a card to get enough fuel and if, um, if it has a power observer, uh, then we will force it to have the red one active, but if it's not if it's not having a power of server at all, we can't wait for the red to be active because it's never going to be, and therefore we will send out the redstone signal anyway. So maybe this redstone signal is controlling when we can uh, send away the cards for for doing things. Uh, so something like this, of course, you can make more advanced things, and we have four different things here as well. But that's pretty much it for the states and the modules. Now we're going to take a closer look on the flow part here. We'll use the logical operators. The AND, the OR, the NOT, and the XOR here. But we have these things here. Top unit, bottom unit, north unit, west unit, south unit, and east unit. So what are all of those things? Well, basically the unit is one of these. So I'm going to grab some of those. And what I want to do is uh, put one there. But first, before I should do that, I should uh, take a look on which color it is. It's it's the red one. It's a bit dark, so it might be a bit tricky to see the red one is the darkest one. But we can see that that on the top here. So the colors are the same for all the different blocks. So we can see that red is on this side, and therefore that's the side there as well. Okay. So if we head over to uh, the detector manager here, uh, and and uh, the east unit here. I'm going to add the east unit there because we saw the, the red one. So the colors will help you, but you can also check which side is east and so on. So that's the detector manager is now going to refer to this detector unit. And as you can see, the detector unit has exactly the same setup, exactly the same uh, interface here. The only difference is that it actually says detector unit. So it's just telling us what we're looking at. And what we have here is the exact same thing. So now if I check for, um, I don't know, the Ace Power Observer red like that, what's going to happen is, um, that it's not going to output a redstone signal because we don't have 2k in power. If I decrease it to 1, that one turns green and therefore we will see a redstone signal. So what happens is basically that if we're referring to the east unit, what's going to happen is that it's going to evaluate what we have in the east unit. And the east unit is of course the unit to the east. And that one is red, so we know it's on the red side. So why would we use this? Well, there are a few different applications. Maybe you want to make very advanced trees because you don't have to refer to the east unit right away. We can do, for instance, may we can do something like this: um, east uh, and west. There you go. So now we would have to have a 
a unit here on the other side as well that we would refer to but maybe that's uh, not too good because that that's where we have the redstone signal so I'm going to refer to the bot unit instead um, so then I can put a unit there maybe that was a bad choice as well um, like that uh, so now it's going to evaluate this one uh, maybe that one checks uh, if we have a standard hole something's very silly um, and that one checks if we have the power server red and if uh, both of them are true, that's what we're checking, if east side and bottom uh, unit, well east unit and bottom unit, if both of them are true, we will output a redstone signal. Of course we can use the modules here in this example as well, we could do uh, uh, we could do something like this for instance, uh, so we check for uh, either the uh, bottom unit or the east unit and then we also need to have, for instance, a standard hole. I don't know. So these examples are a bit silly why we would check these. But here we go with an example there. We check it. either the bottom unit or the east unit has to be true and this one. So you can make more advanced trees so you refer to multiple things. Another way is because you might want to reuse some things. So we can take a quick example of that. So if I have a detector manager there, there and a detector manager there and in the middle I add a detector unit then I can refer to the uh, blue one here which is the south and here I should refer to the yellow one which is the north like so um, so if I do that then all the logic I put in here is going to be used for both of these guys so maybe I have like two lines here like so and then I might want to check I don't know maybe I want to make sure that uh, we have enough power um, let's do this this way. Maybe we want to make sure that we have enough power or like I did before if we don't have a power observer then we will have to guess that we have enough power. Uh, where is it? Uh, can't find it. There you go. Power observer. Like so. And then uh, maybe we want uh, to have I don't know Let's just go with the standard hole like that. So maybe we want these guy, uh, the, well, this logic here to be evaluated for both of them. Then both of them can refer to this guy, and uh, well, now we have the same logic, and it's sorted out in this detector unit. And if we want to modify it here, we can modify it, and it's going to affect both. And if we want to to have sort of the same but a bit different in both, of course, we can do uh, uh, south unit and. Um, I don't know, coal engine. Whereas in this one, we might want to do uh, side engine. Oh, sorry, side engine. Uh, north unit, sorry, and uh, solar engine, like so. So now we have. Uh, it's referring to the detector unit, and it forces us to have a coal engine as well. Whereas here, it checks the north unit, the that detector unit, and checks for the solar engine. So now we have this um, shared logic here, uh, and we also have uh, uh, some differences there by modifying it into detector manager like that. So we can see that we can reuse things uh, by having them in the this one here, and we can modify it slightly by having some different logic before we refer to them, and we can also use this to make much more advanced trees if we can't fit it, because as we saw in a previous example, we got to a point where we couldn't add any more to them if we uh, add too many like this. Uh, I'm just going to add a few here. So if we do this for too long, we reach this point where we can't add any more uh, operators. So I can't add this one here. That's impossible. So when we reach that point, maybe we can just do, all right, we want something very, very advanced, then just refer to that one. Um, um, that was too far down. There you go. There you go. So now we just refer to that one, and then it's fairly simple to... Uh, uh, yeah, just continue the logic tree somewhere else like that. Or maybe we want to refer to the north unit on different areas. Maybe we want to refer to the north unit here as well. Then we can put that... Uh, that's the north unit. Yeah, we can put that logic here. And it can be evaluated on two different locations if we want to refer to it twice like that. And we can chain this forever, actually. Uh, so we could just have, uh, you know, this one referring to... Uh, uh, that one uh, which refers 
further and further. So so you can chain this for a very long way. If you make an infinite loop, it's not going to crash or anything because it has a upper limit. If it has a depth of 1000, so this tree here, um, well actually we can check this one. This tree here has a depth of 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, uh, that actually has a depth of all the way to 6. So it's nothing compared to the max, which is 1000, but if you make an infinite loop, it's not going to crash because it's just going to evaluate uh, it a thousand times. So I don't know if you should have, have to keep that in mind, but if you make something ex extremely huge, it's going to stop evaluating in the end of the 1000 uh, in depth. Uh, but that's pretty much it for these detector units. One last thing to mention is that you can, but uh, it's not suggested, you can use these uh, detector managers as detector units because they are uh, upgrades of the unit. So these have the unit component and therefore you can use them here, but it's it's not um, suggested unless you actually want to do something like this. Maybe you want to have two tracks here, and then you have the uh, yeah these are connecting to each other, and then you have the main logic in one of these, and then they just refer to each other. So you could do something like uh, let's see, we need the uh, uh, blue one like that. So this one here is referring to this one, which is referring to that one. Uh, so now these get the same logic. So you can do it like that, but it's not suggested to, to, to use the detector managers as units if you just do something like, uh, you know, uh, this thing here, uh, like that. Uh, then, then use the unit, then it's very clear why you have that unit there, because the unit can't uh, interact with the, uh, uh, the card itself, but it can uh, use the logic from the card. So there we go, that's pretty much it for the detector unit and detector manager. So we've seen all the basics for the unit, like all the logic, uh, all the three different tabs here, and we've seen that being applied using the detector manager. All of these logics still apply when we use the two other things that we have, uh, and then we'll see another type of detector unit as well. So if I head over here and use the detector unit, and a simple PCB and add iron on top, we will get something called the detector station instead. That's going to work similarly to the detector manager in the in the manner that it's going to detect the card that passes over it and it's going to use the detector unit logic and so on. But it's going to act a bit differently, which we can check by, um, well, uh, making an example here. I'm going to move a bit away. There you go. Uh, so you place it on there, as you can see it looks a bit differently, but it still has its colors on the sign there, and there you have the blue bar, um, like so. And what we're going to do here is do the exact same thing, we're going to put something on top here, like so. Here we go. And what this does is a bit special, if we send a, um, we can just add, I don't know, check for a call right um, Oh well, actually we can do this, we check for um, not completely empty. Where's completely empty? There you go. Okay, so now if I send a, a modular cart here with a uh, engine and a chest, uh, then that chest is obviously not going to be completely, uh, well, it's going to be completely empty, and since we invert the signal, the output signal here should be uh, false. Like this. So if this would be a detector manager, we should just see it pause along and no reds and signal being applied. But that's not the case. With a detector station, it's actually going to stop the cart altogether. It's going to stop the cart altogether until it, well, until the condition is evaluated to true. How do we make that condition be, become true? Well, we make sure that it's not completely empty anymore, and now it moves along. As you might have seen, it didn't produce a redstone signal, so that's not how it works. So the detector manager is producing a redstone signal, whereas the um, detector station just stops the card until everything evaluates to true. Um, we can take a look at some other examples, some neat way, uh, some neat things we can do with this. Um, the states here are very, uh, very useful when we, it comes to the detector station. Since it stops the cart, the cart itself is not going to sh uh, uh, change. So the modules here uh, doesn't uh, affect it too much because those are not going to change. But the states are going to change, so that's a very handy uh, way with the station. So what I want to check this time is is power up 
server red active. So what we can do is just start that one. I'm going to move that down and set it to 1k. Of course, if you had this for real, then you might want to have a higher limit. So now the uh, solar engine cart here uh, stopped at it because that one is not um, active and since we're not using the engine it's going to increase quite fast we have no consumption at all since it has been stopped and as soon as we reach 1k what's going to happen is that the power of server is going to say well I have enough power now and therefore the station is going to be uh, evaluated true well the condition here we're just checking for the power of server to be active there and therefore it's going to release the cart and it's going to move along. So this comes very handy when we want to check uh, if we have power enough, we maybe we want a solar engine car to, to um, generate enough power and then we send it along uh, into the mine and then when it comes up again we want to stop it, recharge it, wait for it to get enough power so the po we have set it in the power of server when this one evaluates, well when this one turns green and then we are send it along. So it's very handy. Uh, this setup here is not as good because, uh, well, we added a lot of other things, but the thing with the power of server here, because here it's actually going to drain power to just move around. When we stop it here, it's actually going to, well, not consume anything, it's just going to generate and that's going to go much faster. Of course, the detector manager is sending out a redstone signal with, and just letting the cart pass, which is very good when it comes to uh, actually detecting the modules. Detecting the modules is not that clever with the station, because if you have a cart which don't have a specific module, it's simply going to stop here. And uh, there's some usages, I guess, if you have a want to make sure that a cart without a specific module is not entering uh, a specific area, so it stops here and then you can pick it up. But usually um, the modules tab is not the uh, most useful thing. Here, uh, oops, I forgot to edit this. I was going to show another example here. We can use the has player passenger, and then simply spawn this one here. And since we don't have a player passenger, it's just going to get stuck there because the station is the detector station. But as soon as we do have a player, it's going to move along. So if I take a seat here, it's going to move. So there we go. We have a station all of a sudden uh, for the player. So yes hop in there or if we want to if we have a power up server in this card which we don't but if we do then we could set up something like um, this I guess um, so we check for has player passenger and if uh, power of server red is active and now we all of a sudden make sure that we have a player and that we have enough power. Of course we ha would have to set it in the power of server how much power we want. But as soon as we reach that amount and the player is sitting in the cart, then it sends us along. Until that point, we're just going to sit still there. And there we go, that's the station for you. But that's not the last thing. We have another one as well. So we had the detector manager, sends us redstone and let the cart pass. And we have the... Uh, station which stops the cart and lets it go when um, the uh, condition is true. So if we take the um, detector unit here and put a simple PCB on the bottom, add redstone to the sides and then redstone torches at the top, we'll get something called the detector junction which is quite good as well. So all of these obviously have different applications but if we put that down here, what we want to do um, just to note, it's working exactly the same, and just to, to make sure, uh, you can use these here as well. So since all of these are detector units, they all interact as detector units, and therefore they all can refer to other units. So they all can do that, um, so it's just how they interact with the cart that differs. So you can do that as well. This doesn't send out a redstone signal either, so we don't need to get some redstone from it. What I want to do here is add the detector, well, advanced detector right there on top, but what we want to do now uh, is actually make a crossing like so. There you go. So it, it's called a detector junction and therefore I want to have, uh, well call it junction like this and, um, uh, whoops, there you go. And what we want to do here is, I don't know, maybe check for, for a standard hole, for instance. So if I check for a standard hole and send it along, like that it's going to turn to the left there. So as you saw, it just flipped. Why did it do that? Well, because this evaluated to true. If we want to take a closer look on that, what we can do is check, for instance, for the um, top chest. Now, if you send it along, 
the same thing is going to happen. However, if we send this card here without the top chest, it's just going to continue in the normal path. So if we send along a card which evaluates to true with the logic tree here, it's going to flip the uh, rail there and going to go in the other direction. Of course, this is a very simple thing here, but we can set up the logic tree like, a, um, well, in any of the other detector units. So we can refer to other units, we can have AND and OR and NOT and XOR, we can use all the different kinds of states and all the different kinds of modules as well. So there's quite a lot of things we can do here. But this is very handy when you want to separate cards from each other. So we have this one for a redstone signal, we have this one to stop cards until a condition is met, and we have this one to split cards uh, in, to different uh, to different locations basically. You could achieve this before by using the detector manager and some redstone uh, but this is a much more cleaner and it looks better and it's much easier to set up. So that's the detector junction for you. So these are all the three different ways of interacting with the card. So we have the detector manager, the detector station and the detector junction and uh, we have the detector unit which can't interact with cards. But we have one thing more that can't interact with cards and that's an upgrade, another type of upgrade to the detector unit. That's the detector redstone unit which we get if we surround the detector unit with redstone. So it looks uh, pretty much the same but it has red borders like that. So this, like I said, can't interact with cards either. And um, what I want to do to try this is set up a simple uh, circle here I guess. Here we go. Like that. Oops. I'm going to use the station. I think that's the easiest way to check it. Uh, of course you can use anything you want here. Uh, and then we want to refer to the uh, north unit. And of course we can have a much more advanced logic tree here if we want to. If we want to but I want to refer to the uh, uh, detector redstone unit right away like that. Okay, so this is going to work exactly the same with all these things here, but you might have seen a difference. We have a lot of things here to interact with redstone. We're going to use the redstone input to start with, like that. I'm just going to send this card along here and um, it's going to stop. Why is it going to stop? Well, the detector station there is going to refer to this one and this is simply just referring to the redstone input. We don't have any redstone input. If we however fix some redstone input uh, like this, it's going to be sent along. So all of a sudden we can interact with, with redstone input. So it's not going to output any redstone, it's going to use that as an input. And of course we can still use anything we have here before. So it's working exactly the same as a detector unit, but we can also interact with redstone. It's not only to interact with redstone, but it can also interact with redstone. So now if I step here again, it's going to send that along. Of course what we could do is something like um, um, like this for instance, so we have ore and then we have redstone and then we can check if it has a uh, seat. So now we could send that card along without a problem like so and it would stop otherwise but if we, uh, yeah now it's going to stop, there you go, but if we use this one with the seat instead uh, it's going to continue anyways because it has a seat. So obviously you, you in more advanced setups, in more advanced applications, you would simply use the redstone as a part of the logic tree, not as the whole logic tree. But now for testing purposes, it's much easier to just use the redstone input here. It's easier to show what's going on. So now that card stops and then I can send it along again. Right, but that wasn't the only one that we had actually. As you might have seen, we had plenty of them. So this is just receiver redstone signal, whereas these are receiver redstone signal at a specific side. So now if I add a top redstone input here, like so, and uh, let's add this again here. If I do this, nothing else is going to happen. If I add that one there, it's going to send it along. So if you want to, you can control it using different redstone signals. So what we could do, um, I'm just going to clear some space here, like this, uh, there you go, and then I can add that one there, well, actually, let's do it. Uh, let's do it like this. There you go. So we have three different connections there. Uh, so we have the red one, we have the yellow one, and we have the green one like that. And what we can do is do something like this. So that's a seat. So maybe we want. Um, 
uh, let's do this uh, an or here and what I want to do is an and and here I want a or actually I'm not going to use all three we can let's remove that one so we have the green and the red one so what I want to do here is check that we have a player here and we have um, the green one I guess like so whereas here we can check for the what did I say red one yes uh, red one like so okay so what I've just built is a bit silly because we can't reach these detector uh, uh, plates, uh, pressure plates, when we sit in the cart. But basically, what I've done here is that if you click on the green one, uh, that's the normal one. So this is this one here. We want to send it along the cart when you sit in it. But then we have a master switch, you can say, which is the red one, which is this other side, which we can use to, for, for instance, say, all right, we know usually we want to make sure that there's a player here, but something went wrong. We want to send the cart away anyways. Then just step on this one. Um, so if we want to test that uh, completely, then we could set up. Uh, something like uh, l like this here uh, I don't know well yeah it's going to look a bit ugly but it's fine so let's just take the button here and put it over there okay so now if I have a seat here if I press that button we're going to go along however if I add a button over here um, Mount that there and press it there. I'm going to move away anyways. But if I'm not in the cart and presses this one here, it's not going to move away. But if I put that one, it's going to move away. Of course, if we wanted to to make sure that this cart button here only worked when there were no player in it, it would be very easy to achieve. Just use the and there and then use the not like so. Use the player passenger there and then use the red one like so. So now we're making sure that we either have a redstone signal on the green side and a player or that we have a redstone signal from the red side and no player like that. So now if I take a seat in this cart here, that button is not going to do anything. But if I'm not in the cart, that button is actually going to do something. So now we have two different buttons, one for when you are you have a player in the cart and one when you don't to just send along an empty cart. Of course, this example might be a bit silly because we have the buttons in very weird areas, but I hope you get the idea where we can use the different size like so. But if you, you're only interested in the redstone uh, signal uh, and you don't matter which side, then you can just use the redstone input like that. And remember, you can still refer to other units. So we could put a uh, where is that? A detector unit here on top, like so. If we want to uh, refer to something like that, we could, for instance, refer to as you can see, it updated there. But what we can refer to is the top unit there and the top unit there. And here we can check for uh, for the player itself. So maybe here we can check uh, other things. So maybe we we want to accept a player. Uh, we want to accept a player uh, like so, or a villager in a cage, for instance. That was a witch, not a villager. Uh, there you go, villager, like so. Then uh, we have the base logic here for for everything, but we want to refer to either having that top uh, as true or it as false depending on the redstone signal and then we can simply modify it here. Of course we could put this or condition here on both these locations but then if you wanted to change it we would have to change it in two areas now we can just change it over here. So maybe we want to check all right uh, we want it to be a um, uh, a villager uh, but oops sorry like that it has to be a villager um, but it can't be a witch. I think I think witches count as villagers in in this setup here. So something like that. So now we can just expand it here, and it's going to work here in uh, for both of them here. So now we have a very good example where we can connect multiple things together. This one is just referring to the redstone one. The redstone one is being controlled by. Uh, by that one and that one and we have all of these different things but apart from that it's working exactly the same as the normal detector unit and then we have the detector station uh, that stops the card we have the detector manager that sends us the red zone and we have the detector junction which sends cards to different uh, in different directions depending on the value uh, those three are the ones interacting with the cards and then we have the base unit and we also have the upgraded base unit which can interact with redstone as well but that's pretty much it for these guys so um, 
all of these things here. We have seen the recipes. We have seen how we can well work with them. We have seen some examples. But of course, you can expand this a lot. Like I said, if you put uh, multiple detector units in a chain, it has a depth of 1,000. And the maximum you can get of one specific uh, block is, I guess, six or something like that. So you can have quite a lot of detector units connected to each other to re reach that maximum depth. So pretty advanced things you can build. And I think it becomes very handy when making more advanced builds. So that's about it. Thank you all for watching.